Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. One such expert joining us today is Mike Dempsey, the Managing Director of Claytex. Mike, welcome, and thank you for being part of AutoSense. Hi, Carl. Thanks for having me here. Mike, tell us a little bit about Claytex and the work you're doing today. Give us an overview of the company. So Claytex as a company is all about modeling and simulation and really focused on systems engineering. So looking at how all of the systems in vehicles interact and operate together. So it's a company I started in 1998, really focused on simulating the physics of how vehicles behave. And from that, we moved into driver in the loop simulation in the likes of Formula One and NASCAR. And today we do a lot adapting all of that driving simulation and physics of how vehicles behave into simulating autonomous vehicles. Today, Claytex is part of Technia, which is a big PLM consultancy focused on DASO system products, but looking at how do we use all of that to manage the whole life cycle of the vehicle. You'll be here in Detroit for AutoSense uh, Mike, tell us this year at AutoSense Detroit, what do you plan to present? What do you plan to showcase? So at AutoSense, we'll really be focusing on our AV Sandbox range of products. So this is our autonomous vehicle simulation solution. It's also appropriate for simulating ADAS systems. And what it provides is a fully immersive environment for the vehicle control system. So it's a sensor realistic simulation environment. That means we're providing uh, physics-based models of all of the sensors that these vehicles use to see the world around them. So the cameras, the radar, the LIDAR, and being able to immerse the control system into that simulation environment, put it into different test scenarios to really start to explore its behavior and see, can it handle um, all of the nominal driving cases? Can it handle all of the edge cases, all of the ones where the, there's real risk that could put the vehicle into a hazardous or a crash situation? Mike, for our AutoSense attendees, what do you think will be the most interesting part about AV Sandbox for them? So for AutoSense, obviously the focus is really on the sensors. Um, and so we spend a lot of time developing our sensor models. So for the camera, the radar, the LiDAR, what we want there is, and what we have in AV Sandbox is physics-based models. So that means we're taking into account the geometry of the scene, we're calculating how light or the radar EM wave propagates through the scene to understand how it reflects off objects. Those reflections take into account all the different material properties. So we can look at what happens when we change the materials of objects in the scene. So for example, if we have a LIDAR sensor on a vehicle, we can change the properties of someone's clothing. And that can affect how well that LIDAR is able to detect whether there's a person in front of you. And those are the, some of the kind of scenarios that we're able to use AV Sandbox to explore. You know, how robust is your sensor suite to particular combinations of clothing and uh, material properties or types of clothing that you're wearing? Yeah, that's fascinating, Mike. How, how else, when it comes to AV Sandbox, how else can it be used to support autonomous vehicle development? So one of the key areas, as I've already mentioned, is being able to run all these different test scenarios. So when we look at how are we going to prove that these vehicles are safe, uh, within Europe, there's legislation that's requiring you to look at nominal, critic, what they call nominal, critical and fault uh, test scenarios. So we need a simulation environment that allows us to put the control system into all of these different test scenarios so we can create these within our scene. We, within our simulation environment. We start by building a digital twin of a real world location. And so there's a millimeter accurate recreations of real places. What that allows you to do is drive the vehicle in the real world and then put it into the simulation world and know that that scene is accurate. So once you start to do the uh, correlation and validation of your simulation, you know that any inaccuracies or any differences are coming from perhaps sensor models or how some of the data is interpreted. But that scene that we start from is very accurate. Um, then we have test automation built into the tool. 
So once we've created a particular scenario, we can start to look at variations of that, whether that's just varying the time of day, the amount of rainfall, the, the cloud level, or starting to look at what happens if we vary the timing of the traffic and material properties of the actors or the, the objects inside that scene. So that then allows you to really explore how, how robust is my AV control system? Can it handle all of these different scenarios that we know it's going to experience once it gets out there into the real world? Mike, I want to go back to something you said a, a second ago about Formula One and, and NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Are there key learnings that can be transferred over from, say, the auto racing world to ADAS and autonomous vehicle development? Is, is there any kind of key learnings that can be shared there? Yeah, I think there's quite a lot that comes across into the autonomous vehicle simulation. So really how we do the driving simulation, you know, putting a, a vehicle physics model into a world and driving it around, that was developed within the motorsport context. What they needed there really was these accurate models of the racetrack and then high fidelity physics models of how the vehicles are actually driving. And that's what we developed here at Claytex, along with our partners, RF Pro, who do the, the simulation engine that's at the heart of AV Sandbox. Um, now, what we found when we started to do that with motorsport is that the racing drivers, they're very, they're very picky. If there's a bump, you know, a, a centimeter or two out of position and not exactly at the right point on the track, they complain. If the advertising hoardings or the signs, the markers at the edge of the track were out of position, they complain because they're using all of those to determine their braking points and to understand how to operate the vehicle. So all of that attention to detail, all of that level of fidelity comes through into what we do today for autonomous vehicles. And I think it's just as relevant that, you know, an AV that's looking at the world around it needs to be able to pick out the signs. It needs to be able to cope with those signs, those markers not being perfectly aligned to the road and maybe it's been hit and knocked over. They've got to cope with all of those things. And so we can do all of that. We're, we've built up the systems to allow us to do all of that. Mike, that's fantastic and, and really interesting. I want to encourage all of our AutoSense viewers uh, to visit you in Detroit at AutoSense Detroit and take a look at AV Sandbox. In the meantime, Mike, we want to thank you for your time and sharing your expertise and thought leadership. We wish you all the best of luck going forward, and we look forward to seeing you here in Detroit in May. Thank you, Carl. For more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. For more information on our world-class events, visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony. Thank you.